I couldn't be found Out my big home The bare necessities of life will come to you They'll come to you Hey everybody, welcome back. So today I'm gonna be going over tanks where I'm at, what I'm doing with them. Um, I also got some maintenance left to do, so I gotta scrub the uh, scrub the glass and clean that up. I got some unwanted algae and it's kinda looking a little murky in some of the tanks. So I'm gonna be cleaning both the inside and outside. I'll kinda go over what I'm doing um, as I do it. But yeah, I'm gonna give you an update on the, the tanks of where I left off from the last fish room video. Um, and also some things that I've been changing up in my routine, like my water changes and how I used to do them and um, something that really it was kind of a bummer and I think I figured out what the issue was. I lost a couple of fish, um, really sad, but um, I did some research and I'm pretty sure I know what the issue was, but um, feel free to let me know if you think I'm wrong <laughs> or if you've had something similar happen because it's um, it was really weird. So first stop is the five gallon shrimp tank. So uh, my original two are had a beta in here. Well, he was in quarantine. Unfortunately, I did lose him and I think I know what the problem was, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, but uh, I don't have any plans. I may add another beta in here eventually at some point, but I'm at this moment, I plan on keeping it strictly as a shrimp tank. So I plan for sure getting some other shrimp, whether that's cherries or some other ghost shrimp. Baby tears kind of got out of hand, so I kind of cleaned them up. I had them growing off to the right side. I still left a couple stems there because um, they will they will continue to propagate. Um, they got so bad that they started covering the dwarf baby tears, which I don't think they were getting enough light, so you can kind of see off to the right there. It's kind of patchy. I kind of took a little bit and spread it out. Um, I'm hoping that they'll start growing out again. They started like uprooting. Um, and I lost a lot of it that way, so I tried to put them back down without, you know, disturbing it because they're not like, it's not one giant clump. So every time I try to go down there or I disturb them or something, I, a whole bunch lift up and they, um, they're becoming increasingly uh, frustrating, but I still have some. Um, <laughs> so I'm, um, I'm, as you can see, I kind of moved the light from the other tank to kind of hit both of them to get some more, um, more light down there um, but otherwise this, this tank's going strong it's it's rather healthy no this tank is still going strong I'm really happy with it um, I, I will I want to like prune the rest of the baby tears out um, they're kind of just like as you can see down to the left down here it's, it may be hard to see but they're it's literally just like roots coming down from this big clump of it <laughs> other than the few couple stems that are right here. But um, they just, they keep growing so much that um, I was able to fill up my other two 10 gallon tanks with them, which you'll see here in a little bit. It is insane at how fast these grow um, with the right uh, conditions. So next here we have the 3.5 gallon. Um, just Ptolemyos in there. There's nothing else other than some snails. Um, I also recently pruned this <laughs> that, um, that water sprite grows like crazy in this tank. Um, you can see I still have some brown up here that I should probably get out. Um, but I've been taking whatever I take from this tank into the uh, 30 gallon next to it. Um, but I was having some issues with um, something else which I'll, I'll get into when I get to that tank. As you can see the, the glass is kind of gross. So what I have done, I have prepared a little um, squirt bottle with some uh, white vinegar and uh, tap water. That's it. Um, something that's not harmful to the fish or fish room because last thing I wanted is to spray some kind of glass cleaner and it um, get into the tank and start killing things. So this is a very easy to do, easy to make uh, kind of cleaner. Um, and it works wonders. There's a little bit of a vinegary smell, but um, I have found that it, uh, it works really well. It keeps the glass really clean and gets rid of any kind of water marks that you may get during like water changes and stuff because this hobby gets quite messy. Um, but other than that, the, the tank's going really well. I haven't had any problems. Um, I thought maybe he might have a case of fin rot, so I did do a um, salt bath for him, just some aquarium salts. I dissolved a little bit of it. Uh, one thing important to know 
and I didn't know about this until recently either, but um, you want to dissolve your aquarium salts before you do any kind of treatment, um, just because the salt can, um, you know, can actually burn them if not dissolved. So just keep an eye on that. I might need to prune it out a little bit more, but what you see is mainly the, the hair grass in the front, um, which I kind of want to move to the back because I don't like the fact that you can see the roots at the bottom. Um, it is cool, but at the same time, it's not the most sightly thing. So, I don't know, I kinda, honestly, I kinda wanna do something else with this tank. But I've been thinking about doing something different with this, whether or not I might take it down later and upgrade to something bigger or something. I'm not sure quite yet what I wanna do there, but um, at the moment, I'm just gonna keep it out as, uh, he's happy. Again, this is like a really low flow tank, so, um, Ptolemyos is not the best swimmer, and he likes to kinda just chill. So he'll just sit there, look happy and pretty, and uh, that's about it. He doesn't do much. So this is actually a really great uh, habitat for him. Um, so but yeah, uh, things are going good here. All right, so here we have the 30 gallon sorority slash angel grow out tank. Um, so there's not a whole lot uh, that's changed with this tank, other than I've been removing a lot of the water spray because it's been decaying a bit. Um, and I think uh, that was one of the main reasons I was having issues with cyanobacteria. Um, I saw it start growing in the sand um, and I noticed that it was getting really kind of like, you, it's this really like stringy, um, kind of clumpy like um, green uh, algae looking stuff. Um, but um, it's, it's rather nasty and it just, it got everywhere, but mainly on the um, decaying uh, water sprite. So I think that was the main issue. So I've removed all that and actually I'm gonna go ahead and remove um, the stuff in the front too because you can see it's kind of browning. Um, so it's just it's not doing so well in this tank. I don't know if it's the lighting conditions or what but uh, it just it's not doing so hot so um, which is kind of unfortunate. I really wanted it to work out. It added another kind of layer to this tank and made it look really natural um, but um, Unfortunately, that's not working out. Um, I also lost my female red beta, unfortunately. Um, and I'll get into that in just a minute. I'm pretty sure it's the same reason as to why I lost the um, the, tank, the beta from the other tank, but um, you guys can let me know what your thoughts are. So I was telling you how I lost a couple fish, unfortunately. I lost my, um, I lost three beta, actually, and um, Everyone else seems to be okay, but I was noticing issues with like um, some of their fins. You know, I, I had a couple of cases of fin rot and, um, and the fish were just generally looking kind of ill and stuff. So I was doing some investigation and trying to figure out what uh, what the issue was. And I think I finally figured it out. It was, it was one of two things. So what I was doing, I was keeping water in this room in a giant, and it was a 27 gallon plastic tub that I got from Home Depot. You know, I figured, hey, you know, I've seen people do this a lot. It should be fine. I didn't even think that there may be any issues with this. I, I kept a power head and a heater in there and um, I wanted all that water on hand without having to go and get my siphon and all that and to, or fill up a bucket. I had a pump in there and everything. It was, it was great for topping off or when I needed to refill a tank. I made sure the water was treated and all that. And I think that's one, one issue that may have been it and doing that I may have introduced maybe um, the type of bacteria or something that was causing illness in some of my fish and that would explain like fin rot and other things like that. So I think what happened though was that I was leaching toxins from the plastic and that got into my tanks which caused stress and uh, that would explain this general illness and whatever the toxin was it affected the betas very strongly none of the other fish seemed to have issues so i discontinued that immediately i know some people may think this is common knowledge but i am um, i wasn't thinking about it you know i was just storing water in here i didn't think about the container needed to be like food grade plastic so i think that might have been my issue now they say that it only leaches toxins at certain uh, temperatures or that also depends on what type of plastic it is. I think the type I had just uh, was not suitable for this task so I discontinued that and I'm not storing any water at the moment. So here we are with the 55 again. Um, I just need to clean the glass. Not a whole lot has changed here either. Um, the plants are doing great as you can see. Uh, the sword on the right is just 
monstrous. Um, and the temple plant behind it is actually kind of getting caught up in the in the uh, spray bar, so I need to go and trim that or um, make the spray bar a little shorter. Um, you see, I still have the container up here. Uh, I need to clean it out because I am preparing. You see, I have the other container here. Um, this is housing the Dalmatian Molly Fry, and they're just about big enough to be let into the tank. Uh, I worry because um, you'll see here, this guy, he likes to eat them. He has been the reason why I don't see Fry in this tank <laughs> anymore. And you'll see I have a guppy in here. Uh, she's about to uh, give birth. I am pretty sure I see her starting to square away. Um, and so she is in here. I'm probably going to be removing the uh, Dalmatian fry because I think they're big enough where they will not be eaten. Um, so I'm probably going to be doing that here in the next day or so, just in preparation for the new guppy fry that I'm about to have. Other than that, the, the tank's doing great. Um, the sword, this sword I've had for uh, over a year now, and I started out with maybe like a leaf that size, <laughs> like a stem off of it. And it has grown to this gigantic stock. Um, the temple plants are doing great too, which I love. They grow so quickly. And I've propagated from just having a few to having them um, all, all over in this tank. Uh, and that's where I got uh, the temple plants in there are from this 55 as well. So I actually have not bought any new plants for quite some time. So here we are with a five gallon fluval spec. I have not done a whole lot with this tank. I kind of want to redo it because it, it feels a little overcrowded. Um, and, but I like the natural kind of stream look of it. So I don't know, I'm not sure what I'm doing with this yet, but um, I do kind of need to prune it, I think. Um, these are all like really low light plants. So they're doing great in here. I don't have to worry about it. There's not much maintenance to this tank other than, you know, my daily or my uh, weekly water changes and uh, clean out the substrate. You can see our our Lone Star um, Assassin Snail, the only one I have, um, and he keeps this tank pretty clean. As you can see, all the um, snail corpses. <laughs> but no, he he goes to town in here. I was thinking about getting a few um, a few more for the other tanks because I have a couple uh, snail issues, but they seem to be like they. They get to a certain level and then they stop. Last but not least, we have the two 10 gallons. So you can see, as I was telling you, these baby tears are just, they populate like crazy. And keep in mind that I started off with about a bunch this big and I lost all of it except for one stem. And so all the baby tears, both in that tank, this and the five gallon, all came from that single stem. And this has been maybe, I wanna say maybe eight months worth of propagation. And I've also thrown out quite a bit because I just don't have space for it. But this is the Rainbow Fry grow out tank. So I have three in here that originally, these were shrimp tanks. So uh, they came in here by a total accident and surprise to me. Um, they're kind of difficult to find. They're still rather small, but the more I see them, the more I think that they are rainbow fry. I had actually no intention of breeding them, but I think um, they came in on this sponge filter when I moved it to this tank. Originally, um, I was going to be breeding shrimp. Uh, here we have the other female beta. She's doing great. Uh, you can see her fins have almost completely come back. Um, and she comes and greets me every morning. Every time I come up to the tank, she's always up here in the corner um, expecting me to feed her, but I already fed her today. Um, but other than that, this tank's actually doing really well. But the plants are doing great. <laughs> Again, I'm only using those uh, cheap IKEA lights and I'm so happy with them. Um, but that's, that's about it. 
I also plan on bringing back the 12 gallon uh, Fluval Edge uh, at some point. I have it sitting down here collecting dust, but um, I would plan to bring that back too uh, when I move into the new room. I'll be doing a setup and aquascape video of that too, and kind of showing you my process on setting something like this up, and um, I'll be going over all the equipment that I'm gonna be using. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, uh, let me know what you think.